today I'd like to say a few words about Islam. Um, in, the, uh, in the academic study of religion, we, we tend to separate religions into different families. And so there's the Indic family of religions, or sometimes referred to now as the Dharmic religions. And these are religious traditions that uh, have taken their rise on the Indian subcontinent. They're native to that to that uh, to the subcontinent. That would be Hinduism, Buddhism, Jainism, Sikhism as well. Um, and uh, another great family, and then there are religious traditions associated with East Asia. But another another great family of religious traditions is often called the Abrahamic religions. And these include uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And the, the reason for that name is the common reference to Abraham, the great figure in the in the Jewish scriptures in the Hebrew Bible, um, the uh, the great the first uh, the, the the person to, with whom God begins uh, his dealings uh, with the with the Hebrew people. So, but it it is sometimes uh, comes as something of a surprise uh, to people uh, who are not Muslim. Uh, many people are surprised to discover, including a lot of Christians and even many Jewish people, to discover that the Quran actually contains a great deal of references, numerous references to figures in the Jewish scriptures and the Christian scriptures. Well, historically, this is not really surprising, considering that Islam uh, is is a religious tradition that arose in, in the Middle East. Uh, it arose and it arose in that same area of the world that gave rise to uh, uh, to uh, Judaism and Christianity. So it's a it can be seen as a sibling religion to Christianity and as an offspring, a kind of a child of Judaism, if you will. Uh, and so, uh, just as the Christian scriptures contain countless references to uh, the Hebrew Bible and to figures in the Hebrew Bible, and there's a remodeling of the of the of the Jewish figures and ideas in the Christian scriptures, this also happens in the Quran as well. And it also uh, many of these uh, stories in the Jewish scriptures figure as well in the Quran, which comes as a surprise uh, sometimes. For instance, um, the Quran references such biblical figures as Adam and Abraham, Joseph and Moses and 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 the Torah. So whereas Jews see themselves as children of Abraham and Christians later adapted that language and saw themselves as or see themselves as adopted children of Abraham, so um, uh, the 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 people to whom the Quran uh, came, Muhammad was 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 an Arab, and so uh, the uh, the Arabic people see themselves as descended also from Abraham, just as Jewish people do. Thus, the idea Abrahamic religion. Now, since the Iranian Revolution in 1979, uh, Islam is very much, has very much become an actor on the international scene uh, as a uh, geo, uh, as a political factor in, in everything that's occurring on our planet today. Uh, but before 1979, and for some centuries earlier, Islam as a global political force had become somewhat quiescent. And uh, this then uh, obscures the, the reality that actually, a thousand years ago, Europe was a minor player on the world scene, and the Islamic world was the dominant uh, political force on the planet then. The, the Islamic world spread from Spain all the way over to China and into uh, Southeast Asia as well. Uh, India was solidly, to, uh, 800 years ago, part of the Muslim world. Spain and Portugal, what we, the Iberian Peninsula, Al-Andalusia, was securely part of the Islamic world. And the great universities of Al-Andalus, -Andal Al Andalusia, um, Spain, and uh, it was from there that uh, many of the ideas that came from India, that came from the Middle East, that came as far afield as from China, this, these ideas which were circulating throughout the Muslim world began to create an awakening, a kind of renaissance, if you will, in Italy and in France uh, and in Spain. But with the rise of European uh, domination of the planet, the discovery by the Portuguese and the Spanish of new trade routes and new technology, uh, the, uh, the Muslim world uh, the, the was, was gradually eclipsed for some centuries by, uh, by the Euro-American world that is now um, perhaps itself in, in moving into changed circumstances. Um, so, 
Islam itself uh, is a religious tradition that's about 1,400 years old, and yet, even though it's the youngest of these great, of these three Abrahamic religions, in some sense, Islam sees itself as an eternal religion. Uh, because for Islam, the problem of humanity is that we forget our Creator. We forget Allah. And Allah is just the Arabic word for God. Uh, we forget God, we forget Allah. And so, because of this forgetfulness, uh, God, Allah, has continuously sent a stream of messengers to remind us that our happiness and our well-being will come through surrender, through giving ourselves back in service and surrender and submission to our Creator. And so, Islam uh, sees itself as a religious tradition that's not really new in this sense of submitting to God. Abraham was a Muslim. Moses was a Muslim. And in fact, any human being who hears the call of surrender uh, and to surrender to God is a Muslim, if you will, in English we might say a Muslim with a small m. And so in that sense, even though it's a new religion, Islam sees itself as, in some sense, built right into the nature of things. In the opening chapter or surah of the Quran, um, there is, uh, Islam is referred to, the Quran, the Quran refers to Islam as the straight path. And it, it sees itself as a straight and direct message for humanity without a lot of uh, intrusion of complex theological conceptuality. Its basic message is that human beings continually forget that we were created to obey Allah. And as a, again, the basic human problem is, then is that we forget Allah, we forget God. Quran says, when at sea a misfortune befalls you, all but he of those to whom you pray forsake you. Yet when he, Allah, God, brings you to safe to dry land, you turn your backs upon him. Truly, man is ever thankless, a, a quote from the Quran. And so, um, this then is the difficulty that we find ourselves in, and this is the source of our sense of unhappiness. This is the source of our sense of dislocation. And so, God sends us prophets then, a long stream of prophets, the prophets that we're familiar with from the other religious traditions, to remind us that we are His servants, and we are called to unconditional surrender to our Creator. And it is in this submission, this Islam, with a small I, if you will, it's in this Islam that we will find, and our societies as well, according to Islam, will find order, and our lives will be blessed by Allah. That's really the heart of Islam. In a short video like this, it's not really possible to give a historical overview and to go through many of the doctrines of Islam. But what we can say is that for Islam, this, this call to obey and to surrender ourselves to God, which was delivered to us by a long stream of prophets with Muhammad uh, as the uh, capstone uh, of this uh, stream of revelation, is Islam's enduring and abiding message to us. There's much else that can be said about, the, about this tradition, the, the, the division between uh, Shias and, and Sunnis. Um, Sunnis are, is, the, is the larger group of Muslims. Uh, also, one might say a word about Islamic mysticism. This is uh, often referred to as Sufism, uh, which is an English version of an Arabic word. Sufism has a controversial, um, a controversial position in Islam. Many Muslims see uh, Sufism as nothing more than a way of talking about the spiritual side of Islam. Others see Sufism as a kind of separate mystical path that uh, is often at odds with the more orthodox interpretation of, of Islam. And some Suf Sufis, converts in particular, tend to see Sufism as something even completely independent of Islam as a religious institution. So you can see how difficult uh, it is to speak about uh, Sufism uh, in, the, in relationship to Islam. But what we can say is that um, one of the uh, central practices of Sufism uh, is, uh, the, is, or of Islamic mysticism or prayer, is zikr, which means remembrance. It's a constantly 
It's constantly remembering Allah through the recitation of his names, which, like any other meditative practice, will it bring you to a state of inner peace, inner calm, and a sense of, uh, of, of, uh, of, 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 of communion with, uh, with the divine, with Allah.